When a forester is working with a landowner, there are lots of decisions to make. And so it's really a collaboration, if you will, between the landowner and the forester when it comes to being stewards of forest land. The forester has to understand what the objectives are and come up with a management plan, essentially instructions on how to meet that objective. The first thing you'll need to do is get a forestry plan. And you can just find a, a, you know, a registered forester right in uh, your local town and it, they'll go right at it for you. As a forester, I develop various management plans. California Forest Improvement Program through CAL FIRE or CFIP is one of those. And that's a, a standard management plan which has specific items that the forester needs to address to provide advice to the landowner. You know, what, what do you have on your property? What type of timber volume is out there? What are the age classes? Do you have any issues with the road system? What kind of silviculture might you conduct on the property? What type of cuttings? And it basically just provides a long-term blueprint for the landowner to have an idea what, what they have on their property and what direction you know, they would like it to go. When I meet with a property owner, I like to first walk the property out walk the boundaries, the roads, uh, see where the timber's at, and then meet with the landowner out in the field following my initial visit and walk through with them. That way I have a better idea of what they think they have. Then we go sit down at the table and we talk about what they want to do with it and what I see is possible with it and what, what their future anticipated condition of the property is going to be. The stuff that I've read about what other smaller landowners are doing with their land, they would have some of the similar values that I have here. Seeing things like wildlife, production of water getting into the ground so it gets into the streams and so on. Producing wood products, but in a way that's not negatively impacting the land around here. I've gotten some money from both the federal government and the state government through grants, matching grants, and as part of those, you're required to get a stewardship plan. That is what I base my management on, except since that time, I've learned some things about my land and how things are interacting with, with each other as I worked on the land. Here in Humboldt County, one of the major issues that we have in oak woodlands is the encroachment of conifers into those oak woodlands. And it's a habitat we're losing in California because of the competition from conifers. The conifers were kept out by fire, whether it was human fire or lightning, and fire suppression meant that you didn't have the fire coming through and killing out the small conifers. Conifers have become much more numerous and grow tall relatively fast, and so they shade out the oaks. Shading them out means they'll kill them. I'm seeing a lot more dead oaks, and that's a problem because they're the most important tree on this property. This forest is 400 acres in size and consists mainly of ponderosa pine, some Douglas fir, incense cedar, black oak, a little bit of sugar pine. We are trying to, to uh, grow good quality saw logs uh, for lumber and, and telephone poles. When we uh, first bought this property, because it was such a fire hazard, we uh, had to write a harvest plan and get it set up for a timber operation to be able to thin out and, and take out the merciful trees and leave the good quality trees behind. But over time, we needed to develop a long range plan. And we, so we were able to enter into a uh, non-industrial timber management plan. With that plan, we were able to come in anytime and do a timber harvest. Otherwise, without that management plan, we'd have to go through a plain timber harvest plan every time we operate. So I decided to become a tree farm at the suggestion of the ranger who is in charge of Garden Valley Cal Fire at the time. Having a professional forester working with me in trying to navigate all the regulations has been invaluable. Long-term visions for forestry are needed because the time frames involved with growing a crop of timber. 30 years from a seedling to a merchantable tree. It's not a one-shot deal where we come in here cut some trees down and let the tree farm sit for 15 years. It's an ongoing process. I'm hoping that it remains a sustainable tree farm for as long as the courts will let it happen. 
We do intergenerational long-term planning for our forest, partly by having a management plan that mandates that. Our property is managed by my two aunts and myself. Our goals are simple, to keep it in forest land, to keep it in productive forest land, to keep it in the family. We have what's called an NTMP, a non-industrial timber management plan. It calls for us to grow more than we harvest, to take care of the relevant species, and it is in essence like a hundred year plan. So we're always thinking long term. And so far, since we've been able to keep the forest land together, we're all prospering. The Arcata Community Forest is a 2,300-acre town-owned forest. It's a unique model in California. It's managed a lot like private timberlands under the same rules and regulations. There are three things we need to have for Arcata's program to work. Economics, ecological, and social. We do have an urban situation where the town and the recreational users here have certain expectations. It just means a little more outreach to those user groups because the last thing I want to see is a management plan put together with minimal input and then when we are actually implementing timber harvesting, then, then having people surprised. One of our founding missions here is to be an example, a model of redwood forest management, not only for other towns or other non-government owned forest tracts, but for privately owned timberlands as well. The values we're trying to manage for, uh, we, we can have all of them. They, they aren't mutually exclusive. You know, we can have logging and still have a, a nice appearance of a forest. We can still have wildlife habitat. We can still have recreational use. So I think the biggest benefit of the management here is, is that it's been able to show that you can have a working forest and still have those other values. The planning that a forester does with the landowner goes well beyond just deciding what basic management alternative is used. Uh, it gets into the details of how to carry out those different alternatives. So managing a property has short-term goals, but also long-term objectives and goals. So it's something that is going to change over time. You may have specific long-term goals, but they may change as the years progress. 